Now let us look at these three cross sections for which you will be you know, required to remember the moment of inertia. Okay. Now moment of inertia about an axis, if you have to understand that, let us say this is any body and this is the axis or the centroidal axis and uh, or you know I would say this is the centroidal axis and this is any other axis. So this is G, G and the distance from the centroidal axis of this axis that is X, X is H. If I have to find out the moment of inertia of this body about this axis that is x x so I will write down i x x. So i x x in this case is equal to area into h square plus the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. So this is the moment of inertia about this axis. So in this case in all these three cases we are finding out the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. So for this kind of a section that is a rectangular section you have two axes one is xx and one is yy. So both are centroidal axis. Okay. So ixx ixx this is equal to b into d cube by 12. So this is the centroidal axis do not confuse it with gg over here. Okay, so because this is representing the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis. I y y will be equal to d into b cube upon 12. Okay. Similarly, if you look at this, this is a circular cross section, the diameter is d. So, in this case, the moment of inertia about the two centroidal axis is equal, which is equal to pi by 64 into d to the power 4. So this is to be remembered, this is to be remembered and this is to be remembered. Let us come to this, this is the nice section in which this is called the top flange, this is called the bottom flange. And this is called the web. So in this case, this is a symmetrical uh, I section in which the top and the bottom flanges are equal in length. The entire depth is capital D. And then you take out this portion and that portion, so you get a web of thickness B and this height is small d. So if you find out the moment of inertia of this about the centroidal axis, Right. So, i x x this is equal to. So, let us assume this to be a complete rectangle. So, let me just so this will be equal to capital B into capital D cube upon 12. But from this we are taking out this moment of inertia and this moment of inertia. So, when you join them you get a rectangle of width as capital B minus small b and height as small d. So, you will have to subtract it which will be this into d cube by 12. So, this is the moment of inertia for an I section. It is very easy to remember if you remember these two standard values. Okay. So, now let us move on to the next video and learn about the concept of eccentric bending.